Well, my guest today is Andrew Locke. He is, if you are not familiar with him, the creator of Help My Business, and he also has a brand new show he's producing called Backstage Buzz. It's a music show. Now, Andrew is well known for being one of the first video podcasters that I know of. He's also very smart sounding because he is British. Hey, thanks for being here, my friend. That's a nice introduction. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> nice and short. <laughs> yeah. It's good. So um, our goal today is, um, first of all, we've already done the extended interview, which yeah, is part of the yeah, podcast. The, the three and a half hour version. Yeah, yeah. Great. Oh, it was fantastic. Not really. But uh, it, was, it was really good. And uh, what I thought we'd do here is create a really fast directed one. But maybe to start with, for people who don't know Andrew Locke, may not have heard of you, yep. haven't met you before, yep. who are you? Well, What's as you story? can tell from the accent, I am from Salt Lake City. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> yeah, that's always so funny. <laughs> originally from England, but I do live in Salt Lake City. Exactly. Not a Mormon. Uh, no, no, no. One of the uh, few that aren't in that area. But uh, it's a beautiful place. It is. And uh, my original background was actually as a BBC cameraman. So I was on the other side of that lens, which is, you know, so weird now. I'm the same uh, way. Yeah. Another so, thing we have in common. Yeah. Um, and uh, I created this show back when there weren't shows. Uh, called originally it was called Help My Business Sucks. Now it's called Help My Business, and uh, it's really to help entrepreneurs to build a better business. That's the idea of the show. And a couple of hundred episodes, yeah. Yeah, it, and uh, and they're good. It's a great show. Which, by the way, Don't it's at helpmybusiness.com. No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. And I, I thought what we do is um, we have a couple topics, and because this is the rapid <clears throat> fire segment, yeah. I thought we'd do uh, two things. One of which, which is different ways to monetize a podcast okay, because in sure, our extended yeah. interview we uh, really went deep into mm -hmm. like how you think about creating them we talked yeah. about talent and interviewing questions yeah. but I thought we'd start with the money here that yeah. would give people an incentive to sure. listen or watch the, the main podcast but then the other one is we have a cool giveaway which is your book mm. which by the way there big lessons from big brands the, the new book it is. And you've got a whole bunch of, so we're going to do three lessons from big brands and, and that way we're providing some huge value okay, here. Great. Yeah. It's a good way to get introduced nice to you. Nice to know what's coming up. It is. <laughs> so uh, let's begin with the, uh, some, le some, some of your monetization strategies. Okay, sure. Okay, yeah. so let's talk about Help My Business as an example and also your new show Backstage Buzz. You told me earlier you've identified about 16 different monetization yeah. strategies. So let's cover a few no, of them together. None of which include commercials because, you know, I'm well aware that audiences hate commercials, whether they're on TV or online. Mm -hmm. You know, it, if you've watched a YouTube video where you have a 30 second commercial and you can't skip it. It's really irritating. I like, bought YouTube Red just for that reason. Yeah. I'll pay my 10 bucks. I also do that with Hulu Plus yeah. now because it's, it's a no-brainer yeah. to be, I forget what it is, but it's like minimal amount more. Yeah. And many people are doing that. And they, in fact, it came about because people asked for that yeah. option. So, so we don't like commercials. I've never used them for that reason. So that raises the question, how else do you monetize a show? The number one way is by sponsorship. So uh, that's where a company says, you know, we'll give you X amount per episode to feature, you know, what we do. And, and it's, it, actually it's, it works really well because, number of reasons, number one, um, as a presenter, you endorsing a product or service is way more powerful than jumping out to a commercial break. That's right. Because the audience has a relationship with you. And when you recommend this, you know, they trust you. Yeah, they, it's old time TV, basically. It, it, is like, um, it is like going back to those days, yeah, uh, where whole shows are, are bought, you know, by a, by a company. All right, so um, what are some other strategies? Another that, uh, strategy that works really well is, so in Help My Business, um, I have a section or segment called Nifty Clicks, which is all of these kind of cool resources that I discover uh, that, that, you know, people can use to save time or money. And so I'll show a resource which is really a demo, yep. and then at the end of that segment, I'll say, now if you enjoyed that resource and you want more, go you here can, to get more. That's it. And here's so a little crack. It's it's yeah. it, that is really the it's kind of like here's a taster. Yeah. And um, you can do that. It, I actually do it in a number of segments in that way. So yep. one of them goes to uh, a membership site. One of them goes to uh, a book, and uh, whatever else that you have. So all of these spin-off products and services, it doesn't matter what you have, so you can find a way products. to tie, yep. Yeah, just give a little taster in the episode 
and then have that segment directly relate to what it is that you also have for sale. Great. What's and another so one? Then? Another one would be um, having talking about a subject for a, a few minutes and then offering an expanded version of that. So you like you have the longer version of this show, for yeah, example. That's my podcast. You could charge for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's you know that's another option. Uh, you can also charge guests to be on a show. You can also have spin-off live events, which I do. Yep. Um, and uh, the book. So um, I, I never overtly sell anything in an episode. I never say, buy this, whatever it is, mm -hmm. because you don't need to do that. There's yeah. always ways to kind of um, to, to weave it into the content so yep. that, you know, then audiences, they're very, they enjoy it. They don't, they don't mind that at all. Yep. So like with the book, for example, which, uh, by the way, is available at mrbz.com slash hmb. For free. Go. Yeah, we're not even selling yeah. it. So it, it is available on Amazon, but why spend the money? Because we're giving it to you, you for free. You can have it. Okay. <laughs> nice little gift. Um, so I use the, the book as a giveaway to someone who's asked a question. So I'll say, in return for asking this question, you win a free copy of my book. In doing that, I'm promoting the book. Yes. So there's a lot of kind of... Um, when, when people watch my show, a lot of people say to me, how do you make money? And yet it's all there, you yeah. know, it's right in front of their eyes. They just, because it's all kind of weaved in there, they yeah. don't, they often don't see yeah. it. It's very, yeah. very organic. Yeah. Okay, what's another uh, strategy? Maybe one that you're going to be using with your new music show. So, yeah, so with Backstage Buzz, that's a, a music show showcasing the best in online music on YouTube. Um, we are going to uh, do live events that showcase the various talent. We're also going to get into managing some of these people uh, because of our uh, Chris and I background in uh, the music industry and entertainment. Yep. So you're using um, the show as a platform to feature you guys as experts and authorities. Exactly. Which, yeah. Exactly. Establish credibility in the marketplace, which it, it does phenomenally well. I mean, you know, you can really put your, you know, put your name or attach your name to an industry and be known for that very quickly. It's, it's really amazing how that works. Great, all right. <clears throat> so, uh, any others? Maybe just maybe one more. Um, more. Did I mention uh, spin-off webinars? That's a good one. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, where you just sell your own products or someone yeah, else's you products? Yeah, you know, we also do paid webinars. I've done that before where I'll say, you know, we, have, we only had time to consider this topic very briefly, but on Wednesday we're gonna delve into this in a lot more depth and you know for a fee of whatever it is you know $27 you can learn everything there is to know about that topic Got it. so um, yeah lots of different ways love it it's very very smart so um, let's go on to a couple of lessons so three big lessons from big brands and and we had talked earlier about doing IKEA Starbucks and Walmart as yeah. the select Although okay. I know in our extended interview you had a great Disney example awesome. yeah so there's so. a couple of different examples this book by the way is a spin-off from a segment on the show yep. so you know it, from on one on one hand it, it um, you know it's a brand new book but it it was um, used leveraging a lot of the content that I'd presented in previous right. episodes. So Great repurpose, reuse, and yeah. as we say, I call it the "you everywhere now" strategy. Right? Yeah, and it, it's you know it's a very powerful book because it's a very popular segment of the show. So first example um, was IKEA. IKEA. Yeah. So this is an interesting one. As we know, I think most people are familiar with the concept of IKEA flat pack furniture. That essentially is a very negative thing, isn't it? The fact that you have to put the furniture together yourself. However, IKEA very cleverly have managed to spin that. And when you go to their stores, they'll say, they'll have like signage that says things like, why is our um, furniture so inexpensive? Well, by, being, by shipping everything flat, we save massive amount on shipping. By having you, the customer, assemble it yourself, we save a lot of money and we pass those savings on to you. Mm -hmm. And so basically what they say is that you are getting an incredible deal on furniture that would cost you three or four times the cost. So what they've done is they've taken a negative and they've turned it around yeah. to state it as a positive. And there are many businesses that are in that situation where through whatever circumstance they have something that's very negative. Uh, but the, the point is, the lesson is, you can always find a way 
to spin Great. it around. Nice. What's a Starbucks example? So Starbucks, uh, again, as we know, when you go to a Starbucks, every drink has a unique name. I if hate they, that, by the way. I still say <laughs> medium. I'm not going to, I don't fall into their language, but you go ahead. Well, the, 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 sizes, the sizes are one thing, but they also, you know, even the names of the drinks, the Frappuccino, yeah. you know, the, the uh, I mean, I'm no Starbucks expert, yeah, yeah. but you know how it is. Yeah. Every drink has a unique name. And like you said, the size is too. Giant Fat American is another name. And okay, it's, yeah. it's, it's not just to be creative. There mm -hmm. is a real marketing purpose behind that. And the point is that, first of all, it makes the drinks unique. Totally. No one else has those names. Yep. And secondly, it actually makes them sound more exciting. Yeah. So again, so many businesses need to apply this. Uh, as an example, um, a, a friend of mine had a, they were choosing a videographer for a mm -hmm. wedding. And they went to a few sites, and most of the sites they went to, it was package A, B, and C. Yep. Boring. You know, that doesn't sound exciting at all. It just, it's very functional. Yeah. So what that company could have done is had, like, the prestige, the cinematic package, you know, right. the Hollywood superstar, whatever. So. Choose creative names for your products and services. Right that on. was the lesson it's in, great. in there. So last one's Walmart. Walmart, yeah. So um, when a DVD comes out, uh, every electronics company, you know, you've got your Best Buy or not Circuit City anymore, they're defunct. But yeah. you, every company that sells that DVD, they're all selling the exact same product, so it's a commodity. Yeah. Walmart said, uh-uh, not us. What they've done is whenever there's a big, major blockbuster release, they always now bundle it with something else. So it might be another DVD that's behind the scenes, yeah. or it could be an interview with some of the stars, or it could be the soundtrack, or it could be anything. They, they create this bundle of items. And so the point is, you can't compare apples yeah. to apples anymore. Decommoditize. So. Absolutely. Great. And because of that, people choose to buy the Walmart version more often than the other because they're getting extra value. It's brilliant. brilliant. Yeah, it is brilliant. So, Here's what we got. We managed to do it, and you can get a whole bunch more big lessons from big brands. Check out mrbz.com slash hmb. Get Andrew's book for free, and also check out helpmybusiness.com. Thanks, Andrew. Mike. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome interview. Good stuff. Check them out, and also go to the podcast. Download the extended interview. There's lots of great stuff in there. Boost your income, increase your influence, and amplify your life. Sign up for the Mike Koenig Show podcast to get extended bonus interviews and get the entire show automatically delivered to your smartphone, tablet, or computer every week. Now, the way to do that is to subscribe to the video podcast at mrbz.com slash podcast, or if you'd like to get the audio podcast version, go to mrbz.com slash audio pod. Make sure you leave a review, too.